All right, this video is about condensation piping and mostly about condensation traps. And this is a supplementary video for Module 5, Tubing and Piping. It talks quite a bit about uh, brazing and threading and cutting pipe. It doesn't talk too much about condensation drain lines, which is a key part of the piping for air conditioning. Some of the things that you need to know, and this is in all most of the manufacturer's installation guidelines, is you need a quarter inch of drop per foot of length of condensation pipe. So if you have uh, 40 feet of condensation drain line, you need a 10 inch drop from the outlet to the drain. So that's something to keep in mind when you're routing drain lines, especially through the attic in a home where you don't have a lot of drop or if um, it's in a crawl space and such. The other thing is if you're if it's in the attic, the condensation drain lines are PVC pipe the water that the condensation that drains out of the evaporator coil is quite cool. So in that 130 degree attic, that condensation drain piping will condense and, and start to drip water on the outside of it. And that'll drip down through the insulation and, and destroy a ceiling over time. We're also going to talk about um, traps. Very important concept here with an air conditioning uh, evaporator coils, especially if it's drawing air through the coil and blowing upwards. So we're going to talk about uh, a no trap situation, a short trap, a tall trap, and double trap. And these are all issues and problems that you may run into as an air HVAC technician. Now the way that the air conditioning drains its condensation is it forms on the air conditioning coils and drips down into the drain pan down here. And it if everything is working right, then it drips down into the drain pan and we have our nice quarter inch per foot. It drains outside and out into the uh, in, into a place that will not destroy a foundation or a wall. Now here's so what happens when we have a an air conditioning drain line right here that doesn't have a trap on it. And we'll get into what a trap is here in just a bit. So if we just have a straight pipe, we have a nice quarter inch per foot of drop and we're running the air conditioning. What happens is this blower creates a negative airflow that starts to pull the air from the outside through this pipe and into the air handler itself. What happens is that has such force that the water won't drain out and then the water starts to fill up the drain pan down here at the bottom and the, the force of the air from the blower will start to uh, pick up water moisture and droplets and it'll get blown through the, the ductwork and what happens is, is it will coat the inside of the blower housing and it will also get inside and on the blower wheel and then into the ductwork and then that starts to create mold and microbial organisms growth in the um, ductwork itself. So a no trap situation allows air f airflow to come into the pipe and that negative pressure and that air flowing back up through the pipe will prevent that water from draining and then what happens if the blower turns off then all that water will drain out at the end of the cycle but it's too late because it's already been uh, vaporized and the spray is sent out through the ductwork. Okay a short trap. <clears throat> now this here's another example of uh, a condensation trap issue. A short trap means that it has a very long drop but a very short rise to it right here and what happens with the trap is the water is supposed to sit down in this part right here and prevent that airflow from pulling in and getting back up into the into the um, blower housing with a short trap what happens is it doesn't allow a big enough column of water to sit in in this trap and when it's when the unit starts up it'll suck everything back up in here and the same thing happens with the short trap is with the no trap and you can see it it, it creates the the uh, spray into the uh, 
blower housing and to the into the ductwork. So if if the rise of this trap is shorter than it, it the manufacturer's specifications for the unit, then it's exactly the same as not having a trap at all, just like that one. Okay, tall trap. If the if the trap is is too deep or too tall, as illustrated right here, there's not enough water pressure and weight of the water to force this column of water up through this trap that is too tall. And then what happens is it basically becomes a backed up system and the water, instead of getting sucked and blown through the blower housing, will overflow into the drain pan and into the um, into the air handler itself. Now this is a big issue because first of all this creates a huge amount of microbial growth and if it's in an attic and and everything isn't exactly perfect to prevent this from happening it's going to drip through the ceiling and I have seen in uh, South Carolina where uh, portions of the ceiling have just caved in and fallen in because of all the water saturation that's dripped out of this uh, situation like this. Okay, and then a double trap. Now this is one that is really, um, this is the one that you're probably going to run into in most instances. And what happens with a double trap, you can have a properly designed trap right here, but then over time in an attic, if it's really hot or in a crawl space where people have been crawling around and have dropped or have knocked down um, pipe supports, there'll be a section of pipe that has a bow in it. And this bow could be over the course of 15, 20 feet and not a very big one or very noticeable at all, just a little tiny bow. And what that creates is a, a double trap condition. And what happens is we get an airlock in here and once you get an airlock between these two columns of water, it will no longer allow it, this system to drain. And this is just the same as a too tall trap and it'll back up into the drain pan and then flood into the air handling unit. So if you are having um, condensation that's backing up into the air handling unit and you know that the trap is per manufacturer's specs, specifications, uh, it's time to start crawling the attic and looking for this bow or this double trap that you see right down here at the at the bottom of the unit. So and again, this is this is what you're going to find in most instances. Instances is a double trap and usually a big bowed line over a long long distance, or it can be a line that is laying on the ground and then has just a little uprise at the top and that creates a, a double trap as well. Okay, so the, a good place to start when you're, you're looking at condensation drain issues is the manufacturer's um, installation guides and trapping instructions. They'll have detailed instructions in there of what trap to use, how to trap, and, and what to do. And it, they're different for each manufacturer, so make sure that you can locate those if you can't find the um, installation guide then you need to get online or get on tech support and find out if you suspect that the trap is incorrectly designed and then just by paying attention to that and and the things that we talked about you can prevent some really serious problems like the, the ceilings caving in that I talked about health concerns with uh, mold and bacteria and you know homeowners get pretty upset when their ceiling caves in or they find out that there's mold in their ductwork due to improper trapping so it help, also can help you um, your, or your your um, the company that you work for avoid lawsuits so there you go condensation traps condensation lines if you have any questions or comments or need any more clarification please send me an email get on our HVAC class student forum and post a question all right, I'll talk to you on the next video.